the waiting room. You guys will need to hit record on your on your videos again. But uh, I think Will's ready to go, and we'll turn it over to you guys to ask Will some questions. Will, thanks for taking the time. Hey, Will, this is Brett Jensen with WBT. Um, just how things have been going so far. I mean, the other day, uh, Coach said that, you know, PJ started out ahead of you, but in the last week or so, you've really caught up. How have things been going this camp compared to last camp? Hey, Brett. Uh, things are going well. Um, you know, I think any camp, you're dealing with adversity. Uh, it's part of camp, and you just kind of got to fight through it. Um, you know, my theme for camp has been me against me. Um, there's a lot of things that I learned last year um, with my experience um, that, you know, I had to get better on that I worked on in the off season that I tried to implement. And, um, you know, it doesn't happen overnight, but I've liked my process and um, feel more confident and, and like where I'm at. And it's, you know, it's just a, it's a work in progress. Got to keep moving forward. Hey, Will. David Newton, I wanted to ask you, how much more comfortable you feel in this offense with Brady versus what you had last year? Does it better fit your style? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, not to say last year didn't fit my style. I mean, um, they're different. I think the way that they're, the offense is called is a little different. Um, last year was new to me the way it was, it was called. Um, the plays and stuff were kind of the same, but I had trouble – um, last year just with the just just calling plays um, so this is a little more it makes a little more sense to me to just just call the play which frankly just makes it you know less thinking um, but as far as just the style goes you know I think the style is that we're, our identity is still kind of growing we're still kind of learning what that is this year um, and I kind of pride myself in being able to do anything I think that's the attitude I got to have at the end of the day you know, this is, you know, Teddy's a starter and it's really about him and what he's comfortable with. Um, and, and I have to, I'm comfortable with anything. I'd be ready to go um, if my number is called and, and that's kind of the way I treat it, so. Hey, Will, uh, Jason Huber with WFNZ mentioning Teddy and being ready to go. Uh, he told us, I think last week that he sat down with you and PJ and kind of let him let you guys know about a story last year when it was his number called uh, for Drew Brees. Can you just kind of, you know, talk about that story and, and how that kind of motivated you guys? Yeah, it was, no, it was great insight. Um, just, you know, being in this league, trying to learn from other people is, is huge in, in your own development. Um, and hearing Teddy talk about his experience um, in New Orleans has been great, learned a lot from it. And, um, you know, it just it goes back to the theme that you got to battle with yourself every day. It's the way I look at it is like, how can I continue to get better and continue to stay ready? Um, because you really don't know when your number will be called. I mean, it, it's uh, that's just the nature of the business. So you have to be ready. You have to always be preparing like you're going to play. And, um, you know, that's easier said than done. But I think that's a that's part of the process and part of my job here. And um, I'm still learning and kind of I learned a lot last year. Uh, it was my first time doing it last year. So I kind of have, you know, some experience now on, on how to attack a game week or, you know, go into a season. So I, it's, uh, like I said, that's been part of my process, part of my learning experience. And I feel good with where I'm at. Hey, Will, it's Joe. Following up on that, what would you say uh, specifically in terms of your readiness this year compared to last? Could you give us a couple examples just how maybe the game slowed down and and how how were you able to do all this despite corona yeah um the game definitely has slowed down i think that just is, is time and experience and reps um i think I'm, I'm seeing the field a lot better this year um for a variety of different reasons um i, I feel more confident um i think the experience last year was good for just going into the off season, um, it gave me a lot to learn from and a lot to build off of. Um, I, I was be, I was able to be specific in what I was doing in the off season to kind of get better. Um, and I, I really think that the, you know, obviously I'm learning a new offense again, but it's it's it has come faster to me um, for whatever reason than it did last year. And I think part of that is just you know, learning a new offense last year 
it was my first time doing it. I went into this year kind of knowing the important things to learn the offense fast and go out there and be comfortable in practice. Um, picked it up a lot faster. I was, I was better at preparing this year than I was last year in that aspect as well, which helps you play faster and, and see the field and everything. It's kind of a, kind of a ripple effect. Well, uh, this is Miles Simmons from Panthers.com. Uh, how was getting into the stadium for practice today and how much kind of extra juice maybe did that give you guys? Yeah, I think anytime you get to go in the stadium, it, it, it gives you, uh, you know, like you said, some extra juice. I think guys kind of, there's a different feeling. Um, it was good to get out there and kind of, you know, without preseason, you know, hearing how the, the you know, how it's going to sound out there was, uh, you know, it was good to just, you know, kind of get comfortable with it because uh, it's going to be different. Um, so that's going to be, you know, obviously I, I think it's smart that we did that now and not just going to the first game without knowing. So it was good to, to kind of learn that and, um, you know, try to make it real as, as possible. I, I try to make every rep um, like a game, but obviously when you get, get to go in the stadium and just kind of feel the atmosphere, um, it, it feels more game-like. Um, so it's good to kind of get out there and, and get reps on the, on the game field. Hey, Will. Uh, Jonathan Alexander with the Charlotte Observer. Hope you're doing well. Thanks, um, Yeah, I, I'm wondering, you know, a lot of people seem uh, really confident in, in, in Teddy and assuming you feel that, that way. Now, at what point did you feel like, you know, he'd be right for this team? Uh, Teddy is a very cerebral quarterback. I was, I've, all, I've, I've continued to be impressed with his um, – the depth of his knowledge of the game is, has, has been really impressive, and I've learned a lot from him already. Um, obviously kind of being in a similar system or, or just playing in the NFL for a long time. He's just learned a lot of football. Um, and, you know, he's given me like just watching film with him. I've, I've learned a lot about the way he thinks about the game and stuff and um, have been really impressed with impressed with the way he, he attacks the day. He attacks the meeting room um, and it's, it's helped me a lot. Um, and I think at the quarterback position, that's so important. You know, obviously he's a talented guy. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that can throw the ball well, um, but he really takes to the next level on, on the mental side. He's very sharp. Uh, he knows his reads. He knows where he wants guys. He knows defense. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that makes a great quarterback, makes a starter in this league. And that's the kind of stuff that I am you know, trying to learn and implement in my game. Well, this is Brett again. I'm curious because last year, you know, you started the season basically as the third team. You weren't getting many reps. And then all of a sudden, you're, you're called upon, you know, to start and everything else. I, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but was it almost too much too soon? Did it overwhelm you a little bit last year? Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if overwhelm is the, is the right word. I, I think, you know, last year was tough for a lot of different reasons. And, but at the end of the day, like I said, I just – I used it as a learning experience. Um, you know, th these decisions aren't aren't up to us. They're not up to me. I didn't do a good job, similar to Teddy and his experience of staying ready. I think that when you're in that position in any, you know, in any quarterback room, you know, you can go from the three to the one really quick. Happened a couple of years ago with uh, Kyle and, and Taylor Heineke. Um, you just, you really just don't know. Um, and I didn't really understand that. Um, and obviously it's the first time I've ever been a backup. And, and, you know, there, there's a lot of things that kind of, you know, go with that, um, that you, you know, that I, that I learned. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's part of the experience and part of, you know, my personal journey and growth and, and career. And, and I think I'm glad it happened. I'm glad I got the experience. It made me better. Um, and, you know, I think that's, that was, that was maybe their goal of it last year was to, you know, to challenge me and make me better. And I think, you know, I, I, like I said, I've used it as, you know, experience to grow. So. Well, David Newton, again, uh, having said that about being a backup for the first time, uh, Teddy had to go after having a job in an NFL starter, you know, to being a backup basically for what, four years now to finally get a second opportunity. Has he talked to you guys about that? Can you imagine about the mental aspect of having to handle that and what that's like? Yeah, no, we, I mean, we haven't uh, talked much about it. He shared his experience, which was, which was great. Um, you know, Teddy's had a long career. A lot of different things have happened in his career. He's had a lot of success. He's been hurt. He's dealt with a lot of adversity. He's dealt with success. He's dealt with a lot of different things. Um, I think he's, 
you know, more than ready. This guy's a leader. He understands what it takes to, to win. He understands how to talk to a team, talk to an offense. Um, you know, I think he knew what he was getting into when he, when he, you know, when they made the deal work and he came to Carolina. I think he understands that, you know, this is his team. He wants to come in here and win football games. And he's, you know, coming here every day with that attitude. And, um, and like I said, I've learned a lot from him and respect um, what he's doing. It will. Have they said whether they uh, plan to keep three quarterbacks? And then secondly, it sounds like you're pretty much preparing to play with no fans. Yeah, that, I mean, I think you got to, you know, be prepared for anything. We don't know. And Coach does a good job of kind of keeping us on our toes with, you know, situations. Sometimes we don't know what's going on, and he'll just, you know, call a situation out, which I, I've enjoyed, you know, not knowing, not necessarily having the script and just being able to go and call it and run play. Um, and I think that's kind of how we have to attack the season. Like, you know, we don't we don't really know what's going to happen. Um, have to be ready. Have to be prepared for anything. Um, you know, as far as how many quarterbacks they keep, I, I mean, I, it, that's that's an upstairs thing. Again, I'm like, for me, it's about me against me, preparing to play. I, they haven't told us anything. So, you know, we fight every day. Uh, you know, I fight every day to, to beat myself and challenge myself and continue to get better. Um, have, haven't gotten, you know, haven't heard anything as far as roster. So. Hey, well, it's Elena from The Observer. I was wondering, is there anything like this offseason outside of learning this offense, like that you did to, you know, better yourself or something that you really wanted to work on coming off of last season? Yeah, so um, offseason was great. You know, obviously last year, um, when you're a rookie, you don't really get the off season. So, you know, last year's first time I really got to sit down and reflect. Um, and quite frankly, I had to work on everything. Um, I know that's the kind of a, that's not the answer you want to hear, but that is the truth. I mean, there's, you know, kind of had to press the reset button, get back to the basics, get back to fundamentals. Um, I worked with my dad, just, you know, accuracy, just, just really taking it back to the fundamentals of playing football and building from there. Um, and, and like I said, I, I needed work in all aspects of my game. I wasn't happy with the way I performed last year and I got my opportunity and it really, you know, kind of set things off in my brain. Um, and, you know, kind of took a, just took a 180, um, to tell you more specifically what we did. Um, you know, COVID obviously has caused all kinds of things and, and made it challenging. Uh, but at the end of the day, they're not, you know, going to put an asterisk by the season and say, well, COVID happened. So, you know, you don't, that, but I had to, you have to accept that as a challenge, accept the adversity we were dealt with um, and find ways to get better. So, you know, we got creative with it. Um, you know, I got a net in my small backyard and was just working accuracy some days, you know, I, you know, made a makeshift weight room at my house. You know, I was just finding ways to, you know, push myself and figure out a way to get better during that time. Um, you know, not ideal, but, but also there's, there's no excuses in this game. Like I said, nobody cares what the situation was in the off season. It's on us to get ready and get prepared. So that's the way I, I looked at it. Hey, Will, um, I know that you guys had the, the crowd noise piped in and the music going, um, but there were times when they would just cut everything. Um, what was that like being on the field and it's just completely silent out there um, at Bank of America Stadium? Yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's different. Um, you know, there's, it's, it's really, it's almost like an energy thing um, with people in the stands, even when it's quiet, like you said, like it's never just silent. You kind of can feel the energy of the stadium. You feel people, you feel, you know, you, you kind of feel that. It's not even like a sound thing. Um, and that, and that's different. Even with the music on, it's different. Um, the, the background's different. You see, like, as you're going through, you know, reads and progressions and stuff, if it's empty, you know, that all that's all that's different. And um, it was good to get out there and kind of see that and, and practice that and be ready. Like I said, we had to prepare for everything. So it's good to kind of prepare for that because um, it is different. Hey, Will, uh, Jason Huber again, you mentioned and you, you I think you mentioned this near the end of last year, too, that you, you've never been a backup in your career. Was it as, as hard as – because you had to have known coming into the NFL it's going to take some time to work up to be a starter. Was it a lot harder than maybe you thought and something that you, you know, really learned, hey, I have to adjust into this backup role? 
Absolutely. That was the, that was the biggest adjustment for me last year is just learning how to handle day in and day out. Again, me against me. That was something that I failed miserably at last year. Um, but I think that's where you make the biggest jumps is learning from your failures. And, and, and I failed last year at that. I, I mean, straight up was bad at, um, at being a backup. Um, and like I said, I learned a lot from it and, uh, you know, feel more ready to go this year. Well, just kind of on a different note, I know you have two young children at home. Just what's this kind of like for you dealing with COVID and going in every day, and, you know, also being with your family and that mindset for you? Yeah, it's, I mean, this is, you know, it's scary. Um, my wife has asthma. Um, you know, it's not, you know, life-threatening asthma, but it is, you know, one of the things they'd say is, you know, a pre-existing condition that can, you know, that COVID can be harmful to people with asthma. So it's scary. Um, you know, we've taken, you know, back since this all started in January, February, we've taken every precaution. We've quarantined. We've been very smart, um, trying to follow all health guidelines and, and just stay safe. You know, this, uh, you know, they've done a great job of making us feel safe here um, at work. And, you know, we have our own ecosystem at home where we stay safe. Um, you know, we, we have to practice, you know, healthy, safe, um, you know, washing our hands. We're doing all the, all the little things that you can do, uh, social distancing. And, you know, it's tough. Um, we just decided actually to um, basically, I mean, we didn't even see our family for a couple months, like that, that also lives in Charlotte, which was tough. Um, you know, obviously I'm very close to my family and we just kind of had to shut it down. I have an older grandma that, wants to see your granddaughters, right? And it's a tough thing to say, you know, you got to come stand at the gate and social distance and talk to her like that. That's hard. So like, but, you know, that's, that was, in, it was important to us to, you know, keep everybody safe and safe and healthy. And until we hear otherwise, we're going to continue to do everything we can to, um, to stay healthy. Hey, I'm curious, uh, for those of us that got to watch you today, we, do, we have our own thoughts, how you did. How would you say how you did today? I, uh, I mean, this is all a process. I enjoyed uh, just just taking reps. Like I said, it wasn't a scripted day, so you don't you have a call sheet. You don't know what's going to get called. You don't know what the situation is going to be. You're going to go out there and and react. Um, and I thought, you know, like I said, I mentioned earlier, I, the game has slowed down a lot for me. Um, I'm seeing the field better. I'm taking care of the ball. Um, you know, there's, there's always little things that I can work on and get better at. Um, and, you know, for example, there's, you know, there's certain, certain times that, you know, I got to be better about, you know, getting through, finding the back when I get pressure and not looking to run. Um, knowing where my back is on every play, I've emphasized that and I've done a better job at that, but continue to work on that. Um, and there's things I think I do well. I think I'm throwing the ball well. I'm confident in the, uh, and the way I'm throwing the ball, how I'm placing it, I'm confident in my accuracy. Um, I got to keep, you know, learning this offense, learning how the offense flows and, um, you know, just continue to grow in the offense. Um, and it's, it's really all mental for me is what I like. I, it's the throwing aspect is something you work in the off season. I like the way I'm throwing the ball. Uh, what I'm emphasizing and what is important to me is the mental side of the game is what, like getting through my reads, being an efficient, uh, high complete, high completion percentage quarterback, uh, and taking care of the ball. We got time for a couple oh. for Will, guys. A couple more for him, okay? Yeah, Will. I was gonna on Joe Brady. Um, I don't know how much you studied him when he was at LSU or what, but what have you learned about him um, that makes him unique compared to other coordinators or quarterback coaches you've worked with? Yeah, he's. I mean, he's a young guy. Uh, obviously, you guys know how old he is, but he's very football mature. He's. He's a he's really smart, um, and has has really done. I mean, he's obviously done well with with where he's at. But I think since we've been together here, he's done a good job of just kind of figuring out what we're good at and trying to implement it. You know, he's um, it's not just you know I'm calling this play and you got to make this work. It's let's communicate about what we're good at and you know try to implement those things. Um, really enjoyed working with him so far. Anything else, guys? Hey, Will, um, 
uh, just about a specific player. Uh, Miles Hartsfield had, uh, I think he had an interception and a rushing touchdown today. Have you ever seen that in a practice? And just kind of your impressions of him as he kind of switches sides during, uh, during the during practice. Yeah, I, I I don't I don't know if I've seen that before. I've seen guys in college kind of switch sides. Uh, not not nothing like that last year. Um, but I mean that he's an impressive guy. Honestly, he's kind of caught my eye uh, in camp. Just he's whatever you tell him to do, he's going to do it and do it at a hundred percent. And you know his steps might be off at running back sometimes, but you forgive a guy like that that's going back and forth. Um, and he's going at a hundred percent, man, and just you know playing his heart out. And you got to respect that. You know, from my obviously, I'm not going to jump on defense and play safety, right? But I respect guys that that do that and they're willing to do that. I mean, for me, it's like, those are the guys that you want on your team that you want to play with. It'll do anything. Like, obviously I don't, I don't think coach thinks I'm a good safety, but if he told me to play safety, I'd strap it up and go give it a try. You know what I mean? And that's, that's the, that, that's the expectation I set for myself. And it's good to see other guys that are willing to do that as well. So. Hey, Will, have any of the young receivers uh, caught your eye? Um, I mean, really all of them, this, um, the receiver room in general, obviously the, the you know, the starters are, are extremely talented guys and done a good job, but there's the rest of the guys are, are all very talented. Um, they're fast. They're, they're all, I mean, they all have their own nuances, but there's really, you know, they're really all, they're really all doing a really good job. It's hard to say that one guy's not keeping up with the rest of the group. I've been really impressed with the way uh, that whole group has performed. I feel comfortable throwing it to any of them. So, you know, that um, not, I can't point out one guy that has done more or one guy that's done less. So. All right, guys, we got to let Will go. So thank you, Will, for taking so much time. And uh, Media, we'll come back to you in the uh, conference call with Coach shortly. Thank, thank you, guys. It's good to kind of see you again. Appreciate it. Thanks, Will. <laughs>